Hey guys, it's Fallen Lorelei. It's been maybe five months since my last tutorial. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but I'm here now. I promised you guys that I would make a tutorial on how to make a big forest scene. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. Uh, what you see here is a forest that I made a while ago for a game I was making. It was really just for fun. Um, it's pretty much just a forest that's outside of the main city. It might be a segue to a dungeon, right? There might be monsters here, there's going to be treasure here, uh, or it could be important for the main story. Uh, it could be anything. But the point is that it's big, and it's interesting, and it's kind of fun for the user to go around and explore, right? You have all these nooks and crannies, um, and really you could put anything in here. All right. Uh, key word here is big. You don't want it to be too small because then there's not going to be any room for uh, any fun stuff like monsters and treasure. Okay. So there are lots of ways that you can make this uh, big forest. Some people will go ahead and make uh, a big map like this, right? I think this is 90 by 60. And this will be the map in RPG Maker that the uh, character walks around on. Uh, this is great. This is uh, fun to explore. But if you're parallax mapping, uh, it's going to lag a lot, OK? Because it's a huge image uh, that you're bringing in. So what I recommend is splitting this up into many smaller maps, okay? Like so. Where do I go? Here. Okay? So here I have these guides that are showing me these smaller maps here, okay? All equally the same size. And I can show you even better here. So here I've got my original map that I brought into Photoshop in order to uh, make pretty, right? And then I have six smaller maps, okay? And that's what I'm going to uh, try to show you guys how to do today. All right. What you'll need for this tutorial is RPG Maker, of course, right? Uh, you're going to need a calculator, um, unless you're a math genius, but I recommend a calculator. Photoshop, this is just what I use. Uh, you know that about me. You can probably use GIMP. Um, you can probably use even paint.net, I think, would have these guidelines. Um, use whatever you want. It should be fine. Okay. Um, there are three plugins that I plan on using. I'm going to be using Orange Mapshot. Okay. I'm going to be using Yenfly's Region Restrictions. And I'm going to be using Cow's Ultimate Overlay. Now, in my previous tutorials, I've been using Bind Pictures to Map, but for this forest tutorial, uh, this is the plugin you're going to want to use. Okay, first of all, there are multiple um, overlays that we're going to be using, multiple layers, I mean. And also, with bind pictures to map, it gets really complicated when you leave maps and come back into maps. And here, you're going to be coming in and leaving at various places. Okay, so you're going to want to use cows. I also recommend watching my parallax mapping tutorial series uh, for beginners. I talk about how to make patterns, which I'll be using for this tutorial. And uh, I also talk about how to use the animated water tiles. Uh, that's specifically in 3.5. OK? And finally, I'm going to be using the default tile set, but I'm also going to be using uh, this tile set that I found from Pandemario. Um, it's a it's an old post, um, but it's what I had used before, and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. What I especially love about this tile set is that the trees are so large, and when you're making a forest scene, especially through parallaxing, you're going to want to use these big trees um, for reasons I'll talk about later. Okay, If you use this, um, make sure to credit her. That's very, very important. Uh, credit Pandemaro, and also if you're doing this for any commercial projects, you need to contact the creator first. Okay, super important. Uh, but with that said, I think that we can begin. Okay, so first thing we got to do is decide what size do you want your map? What size do you want your forest? Okay, so this is actually super important. Making a mistake here with your sizing uh, will cause a ton of headaches later on. Trust me on that. <laughs> Pretty much, you have to decide how big you want each of your little maps, and that will decide how big we want to make our whole forest. Uh, forest. Uh, to figure this out, uh, 
think about, do you want your map to scroll? Okay, so we go to File New, or whatever, New Map, <laughs> and the default's 13, uh, 17 by 13, and this means that the map isn't moving. Okay, so in this game, what I have is a, a moving map, and this is what I kind of recommend, okay, because this gives the user more to explore, and it's a little bit more fun, in my opinion, instead of just walking around on uh, stagnant maps. Okay, so to do that, you're going to want big, smaller maps. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with, uh, let's say, 25 by 20. Okay, this is going to be pretty big. Okay, this is going to actually make a, a big old map <laughs> uh, that we're making in Photoshop. So hopefully you guys have fast enough computers, but uh, it's 2016. I'm sure you're fine. Uh, you're going to want big maps because when you're putting in all the trees and the stumps and the rocks uh, and then you're bringing in the treasure chests and then you're bringing in the monsters you don't want it to be so cluttered like I understand a forest is going to be cluttered and that's what we're gonna try to go for today um, but you don't want it so much that the user or the player can't even like move around okay so if our smaller map is going to be 25 by 20, let's go ahead and, and make this so outside, right? And I'll call it Forest Tutorial, OK? And I'll fill it in with grass. So here's uh, one small map. And there's our character there, so small. And if I press play, I wonder if I can have two games going at the same time. No, I can't close out of that one. All right. Right, and it's moving around, and this is actually fairly large. So this is good. Okay, this is going to be good. <laughs> now we have to decide how big we want our entire forest to be, the whole forest. Okay, we're going to try to think in terms of quadrants, like how I showed you before. Here. Here. All right. How many of the little maps do we want to cross, and how many of them do we want uh, to go down? So here, I've got three across and two down. Okay, and this is pretty big. This is a big map. Uh, if you want it bigger, right, maybe you want to go three down. Go for it. Right, I'm not going to stop you. Uh, and again, because we are using smaller maps, the bigger the forest isn't going to bog down uh, your user, your player. It's still going to add more pictures to the file size, uh, but using a big map would increase the file size anyway. <laughs> so this is fine. Um, so when you decide this, we got to get out our calculator and do some math. Okay. So to do this, let's go back to the RPG Maker, and we're going to edit this map. Okay. So like before, I'm going to make my forest in RPG Maker, the program, and then bring it over to Photoshop. Okay, so what we want is to make the big forest and the, with the width and the height of, uh, of what we want. So if we want 3 by 2, we're going to have to multiply this 25 by 3 and this 20 by 2. Uh, so this one's easy. It's going to be by 40. But then 25 times 3, let's can bring out our calculator, times 3, uh, 75. So 75 by 40 this is going to be a big map. <laughs> Hope we're ready for this. All right, so everything else seems fine. I'll press OK. All right, and so this this is good. All right, so this kind of gives a, a visual of how we're going to be making this map. So this is one small map, and then we're going to have a small map here, and then a small map here, and so on. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. I guess we can go ahead and just start. So I'll color in all of the grass here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Um, I'm not going to be doing too much to this map, okay? I'm going to have the grass, and then I'm going to have the water, okay? Just because water is always a good touch. But I'm not going to be adding any buildings. I'm not going to be adding any trees or anything here. Uh, the main reason for that is uh, we can't actually see where our maps are, okay? And, and it's going to be really tricky to add in a building, say, here, you don't want the building being cut in two, right, between the two maps. Um, I've done that before. That's why I'm not ever going to do that again. Um, we're just going to have to do that in Photoshop. But the water tool is just a lot easier to use in the program, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, so we want our water to originate somewhere. And I made that way too big because I'm excited, but here. And we'll just make it like a stream, OK? And remember that you're zoomed out, so this is going to be small, but when you zoom in, it's going to look a lot bigger. 
Okay, so we've got our stream here. And we can make it like a little lakey f like effect there. And we can go over here. You don't want it to be like straight. You want it to be interesting. And there. We're going to make the water go down here, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of just making this map as I go along. Um, here. And do we want more water? Here, we'll do this. I don't know. Right? I don't know. Okay. How's this look? It's a little weird, but that's okay. It'll make it interesting. Alright. Uh, what else do I want to do here? I pretty much nothing. I can fix that up. Uh, but make a, that a little thicker. Uh, this looks fine. Okay, this looks fine. So, when you have this, again, we're not doing anything in the program except grass and water. You can press your play button. Okay, and then we're going to use the orange map shop to take a picture of this. Um, if you have it set to the default 44, you're just going to have to press print screen. All right. And then it's saved. And if you've seen my other tutorials, you know where it is. Uh, but here it is. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and open your Photoshop. And you can either open it or drag it in. And I'm just going to drag it in. Oh, hold on. That was my old map that I was trying to make that I didn't like. Here it is, Forest Tutorial. I'm going to be doing one more thing to this um, map before I end part one of this video. What I'm going to do is add our grid line and then add our guidelines. Okay, so our grid line is already um, set up, show grid. If you don't remember where that is, it's under preferences, uh, guides, grid, and slices. Just make it 48 by 48. The tricky part is going to be adding the guides. So go to view, new guide, okay? And the first guide that we're going to put in is the line that's going to go down here. And this is going to show where our maps are, right? Just like in that other map. To figure out uh, where to position the guide, you're going to multiply your width, which is 25, by 48. Okay, so that's 1,200. That's 1,200 pixels. All right, and just press OK. And the reason that we're multiplying by 48 is because these little uh, squares are the 48 by 48 tiles, and so we have 25 of those across. We want one more over here. To do that, simply multiply this 1,200 by 2. Okay, so 2,400. So go to View and then New Guide again. 2,400. And remember to select vertical, right, because they are vertical lines. And there we go. And here you can already see how our maps are, are divided, but let's go ahead and add the uh, horizontal line. And for that, what was it? Uh, 20, 20 times... 48, I think, 960. So, new guide, horizontal, 960. Alright, so here's our map. It actually doesn't look terrible. Let me get rid of the grid, actually. This is when you want to figure out what mistakes you made. So, I can see one mistake already, and that is this part here, okay? Uh, the reason this is a mistake is because this is one grid, or maybe two. I'll go and show the, show the grid again. Oh, four, whatever. This is um, four tiles, and so when the character is over here at the edge of the map and then they walk over, um, they're going to just be walking into this area here, which, which there's nowhere for them to walk around, and it's just bad design. So what you can do is go back to your RPG Maker. Oops, not that one, this one and fix that up. Just grab your water tool and then make it a little bigger, right? There we go. And maybe bigger like this. Alright, and then what else is an issue? Anything else? We're gonna fix that up. That's, um, that's okay. This one... Ah, that's fine. We can leave it like that. And I can't get to my arrow <laughs> because of my recording. Here we go. And over here, that actually looks really good. Good. What I'm going to do is add more water over here 
so that the water is kind of peeking up, let me see, peeking up into this top map and it, it just adds a little bit more interest so that the user kind of sees that there's water down there and they're interested, right? I don't know. There. And then I'm just going to make it a little neater because it does look like, it looks like an alien river. No offense to aliens, but how's that? Okay. And then pretty much just save it again. Print screen. Okay. And then uh, open it up. There's probably a way to update it automatically, but I just f bring it over. Whoops, view, uh, fit on screen. And that's not right. There we go. And press OK. All right. And then merge that down. And there we go. All right. So in part two, I'm going to be doing the fun part, right? Adding the trees, adding the bridges, um, adding the grass and the stone and um, all of that fun stuff. <laughs> so uh, stay tuned. I don't know when I'll get to it, maybe directly after this video, but it's going to be a lot of fun and I hope you learned something. <laughs> uh, again, let me know in the comments what I did right and wrong and what ideas for future tutorials you might have. And I think that's it. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.